What up, fighters and fight fans? Uh, Salvador Rosas bringing you another uh, Sweet Science boxing tutorial this time. Uh, obviously, as you saw in the clips before, it's going to be on uh, Pacquiao's lead straight. Now, uh, Pacquiao, you know, just came off of a victory last night against Jesse Vargas. Uh, Vargas was really out of his depth, to say the least. Um, he just he just looked lost in there. Um, very similar to the fight against uh, Tim Bradley. He just didn't know. Tim Bradley just just outboxed him on, an, on another level. And then at the very end, obviously, caught him with that heavy right hand that he's got and, and really staggered him. He wouldn't have won that fight, you know, even had the even had the ref not stopped it. He wouldn't have won that fight. But last night, uh, definitely out of his depth against Pacquiao. Uh, Pacquiao dropped him in the second and then just outboxed him. Um, Jesse Vargas could never really get his hands off. And, um, you know, Pacquiao's speed was uh, definitely proved to be too much. Uh, but with that being said, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about today's tutorial. Um, Pacquiao is southpaw. I mean, for anyone who has spent any time watching him knows that. Uh, but the reason why I titled this uh, Lead Straight is because um, really, you, I mean, you can pull off that move whether you're right-handed or left-handed. You just have to be fighting... You know, if you're a southpaw, you have to be fighting an orthodox fighter, and if you're an orthodox fighter, you have to be fighting a southpaw. There's no reason, other than the fact, other than for the sake of hand speed, why his orthodox opponents can't do the exact same move to him. Um, so what I want to do is uh, kind of get into the tutorial, uh, talk about how he sets it up and the mechanics of how he pulls it off, uh, and then just some side notes on things to look at. Okay. Right, so as I mentioned before, you know, it doesn't really matter what. What if we're orthodox or whether you are southpaw, you know, the disclaimer with this tutorial is that it's only going to work if you are fighting the opposite style, right? It's not going to really, the, the setup for this and the mechanics isn't going to work the same for someone who is orthodox fighting orthodox or southpaw fighting southpaw because uh, you don't essentially, your jab hands aren't conflicting or your lead feet aren't conflicting. This is to result, this, this lead straight a move is essentially to um, resolve a lead foot dominance problem, right? So when your lead foot, which is obviously your front foot, is and is essentially the same in line with his lead foot, there's always going to be a conflict there that needs to be resolved. And the only way you can really resolve that uh, in a defensively sound manner is to establish lead foot dominance by being able to step with your lead foot to the outside of his lead foot. Okay. And Pacquiao does this, he's so short and his legs are so tiny, he does have very quick feet, but a lot of times he ends up lunging in and jumping with it. So I'll kind of show you how he does that. But essentially, he's, he with the move, he simultaneously throws the punch and establishes lead foot dominance at the same time. Uh, and the way he sets it up, and Tim Bradley was, uh, was uh, calling the fight last night. And he pointed out something that was insanely obvious and has been obvious throughout Pacquiao's entire career. And it's that, you know, obviously conversely the, to the way I'm doing it, you know, he sets it up by bobbing left and right. And every time that he bobs to his right, because it's his left hand that he's throwing, every time he bobs to his right, that's when the shot comes, right? Now, obviously, he's fast enough to pull that off consecutively without people being able to, to catch on or without being able to catch on up to the speed that he's throwing it with. But essentially, it, it's, a, it's a huge tell, right? Uh, he bobs, he bobs, he bobs, whap, and then he throws it out there. Every time that he comes this way, you know, he, he throws it. Whap. So he sets it up by throwing jabs and by using footwork and feigning and things like that. And then, you know, you, 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 you're trying so essentially he gets you're trying to keep up with his movement so much his extra movement his feet moving his his head his his side shuffles that you lose track of the fact that he still throws it every time he he drops that shoulder and, and comes over here because he can hurt you so many different ways you have to keep track of every movement that he has so by the time you're trying to keep track of all that other stuff he drops that shoulder whap, and throws it out there and he hits you with it every time so, but you saw, you know, the way that I was doing it, you know, before, you know, I started talking, you know, he brings his hands up high, he, he comes here, he comes here, and as he leans towards his lead foot, that's when he throws it, whap, 
and, and that's when it comes out really quick. Wow. And the thing about it is, is with a right cross, a lot of times when it's coming from way back here, you can see it coming. And it's, you know, it, that's, you know, it's a lot of times easier to see. But when he's just dropping the shoulder and then bringing it out, it almost is it's very akin to a jab, right? It'll snap your head back, uh, and it's, you know, and he's obviously got enough power to drop people with it. Um, you know what I mean? But it's not the same as coming from an overhand right over the top or something like that, right? So he comes here, whap, throws it out, and smacks him right in the face with it. And obviously it's going to hurt a lot more than the jab because, you know, he's putting a lot of power behind it. But I want to show you the feet, essentially. All right, so I've set up these two uh, pillars here to kind of show you the footwork, right? So what happens is, What you'll see is that this pillar right here is essentially my representation of the lead foot. This is the back foot, right? Essentially, this is a this is a southpaw fight, right? Jabbing with his right, crossing with his left, right? And I'm over here, right? So what's going to happen is, let's see, you can kind of see when I'm standing here, right? There's there's a conflict right here. There's a lead foot conflict, and the only way to resolve that is to be able to step to the outside of his foot, boom, and then bury him with a right hand, right? So let me just tilt this up a little bit so you can see. So I can resolve that conflict, and, and, the, and he resolves it rather quickly and at the same time. He's here, he dodges, he bobs, 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 and you see if I, once I bob to this foot here, he steps, he kicks, he pushes off with his back foot, lunging in and throwing the punch at the same time. Bah! Right? Now if you see, I resolved that conflict by establishing the lead foot. And I'm, so his jab is only going to, you know, you can't, you're not going to jab like behind you. You know what I mean? If someone's coming, if someone establishes this position, you're not going to jab out like that like that's just this so awkward you're, you're never going to be able to establish anything that way so he ducks the punch you know and he can even use this as a counter and he's used it as a counter he can duck a punch if it's coming and he can throw the punch and establish that lead foot all at the same time all right so he just comes in you know he's he's bobbing he's weaving he's bobbing he's going, right so he just stepped through it Hit him, and then usually what he'll do is he'll duck out and then circle. Obviously defensive minded, right? So he comes out, whack, and then usually he'll step and then duck out. You'll see him. So he goes, bah, 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 right? So he's doing two things. He's doing a lot of things at once, right? He is establishing lead foot. He is protecting himself from the jab, and he's throwing all at one time. And that's what's made his left hand so effective throughout his entire career, is that that one move that he does satisfies so many different criteria um, with one move. It's defensive-minded, it's a power shot for him, and he's so fast that he's able to set it up uh, utilizing his footwork and, and just the different movements that he does. Again, conversely, a right-handed fighter can do the same thing. An orthodox fighter can do that same move to an orthodox to a southpaw fighter, um, setting it up the same way. So, essentially, you know what I mean. Just you know, just remember, you know, it, it, this move only works, you know, conversely with that setup. But by establishing that lead foot and throwing that hand out, you're you are taking care of a lot of things at one time. You're killing like three birds with one stone. You're being defensive-minded because you're moving outside of the jab. You're establishing lead foot dominance, which opens up your offense for angles, and you are throwing simultaneously, right? That's a lot of that's a lot of criteria to satisfy with one punch, and uh, that's why you know to this day, I mean, how long has Pacquiao been fighting? It's still one of the best punches in in boxing. It just it is. Um, it's his signature very much in the same way that my last tutorial. On Floyd Mayweather's pull counter, that's Floyd Mayweather's signature. Is that pull counter, right? His whole his his 
offense and defense are predicated on it. And Manny Pacquiao's offense is very much predicated on that lead left or that lead straight. So uh, if you guys have any questions, obviously post them below. And then uh, I will talk to you guys later.